In this video, I'm going to combine two things that I really love, and that is Microsoft Clarity and Power Apps Portals or Dynamics Portals, whatever you still call it. So the first thing is Microsoft Clarity. And if you've been following along any of the blogs and recent videos I've done, I have done a whole series where I've basically gone through and dug in to the installation of Clarity, how you can set up um, custom tags, how you can review the recordings, heat maps, filters, and all that sort of stuff. So one of the things that I wanted to look at is what we could do with a Power Apps portal and how we could actually get some stats and information that comes into Clarity that's coming from a portal. So you've got your, your customers or your contacts that are logging into the portal. But what's the popular or what's the valuable data that they're finding? What are the journeys that they're taking? And is anyone actually logging in? So the first thing is what we're going to look at is um, the installation of it, or it's really just basically adding the tracking code, which is very straightforward. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how you can add custom tags so that we can do things like filter the data based on an account name or a contact. Um, also filter based on is the recording or the data that we're looking at based on someone's first time logging in. Have they been looking at knowledge articles? That kind of thing. Now, one thing that's important um, before you embark on adding any custom tags or doing anything, make sure that you have read through the terms and conditions for Microsoft Clarity. So that's something that when you go ahead and you sign up, then you are agreeing to it. Make sure you read that because that's up to you to determine what it is that you think is OK to be passing through and deciding what should be um, personal data, what is it in terms of like if you're sending stuff back that maybe you shouldn't. So that's on you. Make sure you go ahead and you read those terms and you decide what you can send back to Clarity. All right. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my um, portal. Uh, so I'm looking at a standard portal that I've installed. I haven't done any customizations to it, but what I have done is I've started to put in, or I've put in the tracking code and I've added some data so that I can actually track uh, the visits to the site and get it in Microsoft Clarity. So the first thing is if I look at all of the web templates for the portal, I'm going to go down to the header one. Uh, let's just filter this first of all. And then let's go to the header. Now, the header is where you should put the standard tracking code. And the standard tracking code, let me just get rid of this. That's the standard tracking code. And that would be whatever your project ID is. And you get that from Clarity itself. Um, when you've actually gone ahead and you've, um, oh, hang on. There we go. When you've set it up, you're basically going to get that tracking code and you're going to go ahead and put it into the header. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to be able to track and I want this to trigger every time somebody's on a page to know um, the recordings or the visits that are based on certain things. So I've got three additional um, sections within this script that I've gone ahead and added in. And that is to be able to capture the account, the contact and the type of user that this is. So this is where we start to use Liquid. Now, if you don't know anything about Liquid, I've got a link to my blog post within the description below this video. And also within that blog post, you will find all kinds of references to understand from very basic what Liquid is. And then also people like Nick Dolman, um, like Colin Vermander, like... Um, uh, who am I missing? Jim Novak, uh, Nicholas uh, Hayduck, all of those sorts of people, there's going to be links to their um, blogs. So you can go ahead and delve into as much as you want to. This is very, very simple and straightforward and you don't need to know anything, but it's a good idea to know what it is that you're adding. So Liquid allows us to basically pass through values and basically say, okay, if a user's logged in, let's go ahead and go from the user, which is essentially a contact record, and from the, the ID that is the parent customer ID, so on the account lookup field, 
get the name of the account that they're linked to. So we're going to pass that through. Now what we do is the um, clarity code to be able to add a tag is basically this, this is always going to be standard. So clarity and then the set in quotes. Account is basically a key. So what do we want to use as the, um, I guess the name of the tag that we would see in a drop down. And then the next part is what value do we want to actually have in that list? So the value in this is going to be dynamically created based on the person that's logged in and will pass through the account name. Next, we're doing something extremely um, similar to that, where we're basically passing through the tag of contact. And then from there, we're again using Liquid and basically saying if user, so if the person visiting the site is logged in, let's go ahead and get the full name from the contact record, which is the user that's logged in, and let's pass that through. The next thing we're doing is I thought it might be interesting to be able to filter visits in or out of my data when I'm looking at it so that I'm either looking at stuff that is just for people that are authenticated or anonymous or also administrator. Now I've used the standard web roles for this. This may or may not work for you depending on what web roles you have. And also if you have somebody that's set up with multiple web roles. So consider this, it might not be, um, it might not fit in with the requirements for your specific portal, but this is just again, showing you an idea. So we're basically saying if the user's roles contains, and that's the name of that role of administrators, then pass through a value of, of, of administrator. If the user's roles contains authenticated users, let's send back through the word authenticated. Otherwise, if it's neither of those, we're just going to pass through the word anonymous. All right, so those are three tags that I've set up. If I go back into Clarity, and I look at the dashboard and I click on filters, the custom tags will show up here. So I have account, that's the key. And then the values we've seen that are being passed through is based on whoever logged in, what was the account that they were linked to, the name of the account. If I look at contact, I can see the names of the contacts. And then finally on this one, we've got user type. So I could filter based on the um, security role that somebody, or sorry, web role that somebody has been given. So if I went ahead and I picked contact and I said Jane Doe and I press the plus button that adds the filter, I then apply it and then it filters based on that information. All right, so next, those ones I've put in the header because I want those to trigger every single, on every single page to basically capture that information. However, we might also want to track things um, based on the other things that somebody does based on a specific page that they're going to. So I thought, well, maybe I could have a uh, custom tag to basically see was a search included within someone's visit. So a visit is from the point that they open up the page and then go all the way through and then essentially close it. So that is basically, we've got an entry point and then we have an exit point or, or the person closes the browser. So if I go to web pages, we have the search page, which is the page that gets displayed. So if I go ahead and I type in billing and do a search, the search that um, once we've, we've done with the search, the page that gets shown is basically using the search, the standard search web page. So if I go into that page and then I go into the localized content and I click on advanced, I've basically added in this line where we're basically doing clarity set and then the key that I'm setting up as search included and the value is yes. So I'm not doing anything dynamic with the value. I'm just basically saying set that to yes. So if somebody does a search, we would then be able to come into Clarity and we'd be able to go to our filters and say search included, yes, and add that in as a filter, okay? Okay, so something else that I wanted to be able to do is to have the ability to determine whether or not um, the visits or the recordings that we have if the people that had uh, sort of triggered those, if they were new users, so was it the first time that they were actually logging in to the portal? 
So the way in which I thought about how we could do this is based on if the terms and conditions have been presented to the user. Now, if you don't know how to set up the terms and conditions, I have linked below to a blog post from my friend Eliza Benitez, which basically shows how you set up terms and conditions in portals. Really, really good job on the blog and there's also a video. So go ahead and look at that. Essentially, what happens is we've got the content snippet of um, terms and conditions, let's see, the terms and conditions copy. So that's the text that is displayed to the person the first time that they log in. OK, so there's all the text that would be displayed. But if I go into the HTML, I have basically added a script. And again, rather than dynamically setting something, I'm just basically saying if somebody sees this content, that's going to trigger and it's going to pass back into Clarity and say new user is the key. And then yes is the value that's passed through. So again, if I go back and I go into the filters again, custom tags, new user, yes. And then we apply that. Oh, if we do it right, we press the plus button and then we apply that. So then I filtered that. So two users have actually been displayed that page. So then I could look at any of the other information that was included within that entire um, visit, any recordings, heat maps and so on. All right, so next, what I wanted to be able to do is I wanted to be able to see um, if somebody had looked at a specific knowledge article. Now, this one was a little bit more challenging. So I thought that I would be able to get the knowledge article from the page that was being looked at and then pass it through. So if I go into web pages, we have a knowledge base article details page, which when somebody is on a knowledge article, if we just go ahead and open up this one, we can see the URL at the top and it actually has the knowledge article number in there and it's also in the breadcrumb, but it's not anywhere else on the page. So it took me a really long time to figure out that, OK, I'm not going to be able to get it from the page. And the only way that was really accessible was from the URL itself. So figured out and got to the point where I knew that and I'd got to the point where I was able to extract the knowledge article. But then after that, I was like, what am I going to do? Then I found a blog post from Nicholas Hayduk who explained it in a really good way and also had a neater way to be able to actually extract the um, information that I needed where he's got a post where he's talking about knowledge articles and then how to actually get the article number. His was based on being able to then create a custom page to be able to display the articles. All I needed was to be able to actually get the information to then pass it through into Clarity. So again, if I go into localized content for this page and then I click on advanced, here's what I ended up doing. So this one's a little bit more um, involved. Um, so the first area up here, what that's doing is it's basically taking the URL, the path. So the a URL at the top here. So it's taken that path. Notice that these are divided up by um, forward slash characters. So we're basically splitting the URL up based on that. Um, then what we're doing is we're basically going back and taking the second to last one. So second to last one is this one. And then what we're doing is we're essentially taking that um, uh, final value and he's basically calling it CA code. So knowledge article code. So that will give us the final code. So for this example, it will give us KA01004. Great. Then what I'm doing is I am saying, OK, well, when I do the next part, I want to make sure that I'm not pulling anything from the cache. So if somebody's looked at multiple knowledge articles in succession, I don't want it to pull from the previous page cache. So then the final part, I am using fetch XML statement and I'm looking for the entity of knowledge article. I only want to pull back the attribute of article public number, which is that KA00, whatever it might be. And then finally, I'm filtering to make sure that I only pull back the knowledge article that 
uses whatever it was that this part at the top had extracted, so the actual knowledge article number, and then I'm making sure that I'm not pulling something that's from the cached um, uh, values that have been pushed from a previous page. So then finally what I'm doing is I am then saying the actual information that I want to pass is a clarity, that same thing that we've used on the previous ones, clarity, we're setting the key is knowledge article and the value is the actual article public number. So we have to do quite a lot to actually then go ahead and get that. And then I thought, well, actually, what you might want to do is just go ahead and say, just say, did someone look at a knowledge article? Yes or no. But this would actually get you the number itself. So if I now go back into Clarity and I go back to my filters and then I look back at the custom tags, we've got knowledge article and then we're actually able to see the numbers. Now, one thing you might have noticed already is these are not sorted alphabetically or numerically. Um, and at the moment it doesn't. So it's basically going to give you a list and they're not going to be sorted, uh, which is a little bit annoying. But I hope that this gives you some ideas, some tips, um, six different ways in which you can then use custom tags to filter the data that's being passed from your portal into Microsoft Clarity. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Any other ideas? What else might you want to be able to sort your data on? Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.